Tasting our 2019 vintage um, Hamilton Russell Walker Bay Pinot Noir. Um, I did have a, comp a question earlier why the why the black band on the on the capsule, um, which we don't normally do. That's just to show people um, that it is in fact Walker Bay. You know, we, we don't typically um, have a Walker Bay Pinot Noir because of the fire in in 2019 that um, destroyed most of our crop. Um, we decided to to see what was available, and um, some of our very kind neighbours in the Yimla and Arda um, uh, had some grapes available for sale, and we we decided to make um, Pinot Noir from those. So this wine's in fact only got 16% of Hamilton Russell fruit in the stuff that was least affected by the by the smoke. Um, on the label as well, you can see it just says Hamilton Russell, not the normal Hamilton Russell vineyard. So it, it was um, obviously quite a tragic event for us. Um, it was a beautiful crop, as I think most of you know, the, the 2019 was amazing. Um, but with the smoke that, you know, it would have been foolish of us to, to, to bottle that wine or the bulk of it. We, even though we had tastings and many people couldn't really pick up the smoke taint, it is something that can develop in the wine and, and um, you know, make it unpleasant to drink. So I think the 2019 came out very well. Um, it's, it was nice in the sense that we could actually make a, a Yimmel and Arda wine. It, it, it says Walker Bay on the on the label, but we um, it, it's fruit from all three appellations within the Yimmel and Arda, um, made in the in the sort of Hamilton Russell style. I didn't do much different from a winemaking point of view as I would have, um, except we did ferment because of possible smoke taint. Um, fermentations were they weren't rushed but we, we didn't do extended skin contact or anything in this vintage um, and I think I think it's a beautiful wine it's a bit more fruit forward than Hamilton and Russell usually is and I think that if you if you taste some of the um, different uh, producers wines I think you know Hamilton Russell is usually the one that's got the least uh, fruit perfume and, and things on the on the palate it's usually a bit more structured um, but this for me is a very good uh, representation maybe of of a Himmel and Arda blend um, I really like the, the sort of aromatics on it I think it's it's nice and clean it's obviously our our usual oak regime um, and nice red and darker fruits nice spice in the palate from the oak um, and I think, you know, a wine that for for the um, for the crisis we were facing, one that turned out very well, um, thanks to thanks to help from the rest of the from the area. So we reach after this. It's it's basically, um, you know, it's 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 almost like a adopted child that we still love. It's it's not <laughs> it's not a you know it's very little of our own fruit in there, but it's it's. Um, I think there is still a, a, a house style which is very pleasant in the wine. 2019 without smoke tent was a yes. amazing vintage. Yeah. But uh, kudos to you guys for you know jumping in and doing all this work. I think a lot of us have learned um, from the trage tragedy. Mm. Yeah, it, it does explain on the back label for those of you that are interested. I know no one reads a back label in the wine industry, <laughs> but um, it does explain why why it was yeah. done. And, yeah, and I think if the wine stands out in a vertical one day, there's a story behind it. And yeah. The 2019 Galpin Peak, I think I'm going to reiterate a lot of what Emil said. Uh, it was a vintage that was very well received. Um, cropping levels were up um, above our long-term average. Uh, quality was really good. 
Um, and again, Galpapika blend of seven vineyards, seven vineyards we have on the farm. It's also a, a vintage that qualified for Tete Cuvée, so we bought with the Tete, which in some years actually leaves um, the Galpapika a bit short, but I don't think in this vintage. I think this vintage, the wine is still, um, you know, holding up uh, very well. Um, stylistically typical of Bouchard Finison, uh, savory notes, more muscular in style, um, and, and very typical of, of what we achieve in our vignettes. But uh, without sounding negative, the 11th of February, uh, the 11th of January is really uh, burnt into my mind as well. Um, and therefore, I think a vintage of ups and downs. Obviously, we've just heard from Emil. Uh, you know the low points, um, but the cooperation that all the vintners, everybody jumped in to help each other. Um, that was really a highlight, um, and just realizing that Mother Nature, what she offers, you know, it can easily, easily be taken away. And you have one day that side of the fence and this side of the fence. We were very fortunate to be fairly untouched. I mean, we had one vineyard that was that we had to exclude. Um, but yes, it's, it's ups and downs. So this wine, is, I think, is a bit of a celebration to us um, that we could still manage um, to continue this good run of vintages that I think we've all been on uh, for some time. Uh, so happy with the wine. Uh, like I've mentioned, typical Bouchard finish and savory notes, uh, more dense, um, densely woven fruit, less aromatics that we'll find higher up in the, in the valley. Um, yeah, I think the wine, the wine speaks uh, possibly loudest for itself. I'll be red fruit on this as well, mm. you know, with the savouriness too. Uh, it, it is, it is definitely showing more than than other vintages that I've. Is, um, is, the, is the oak regime the same as normal? It's it's yes, very much about twenty eight percent new oak. We use the same two coopers that we've been using now for about five years. Um, we started incorporating a little bit of blonde uh, toasting as well uh, from this vintage, but pretty much the same regime. Um, I feel it, it integrates very well. I don't know if it's because of the blonde toasting or the vintage, but, but um, I find sometimes that your wines need sort of just a little bit like maybe a year in bottle before it really integrates. And, yeah. and the, I remember this vintage from when it was bottled, and, and it, it's just the, the oaking has been spectacular on it. Thanks. So good move. Yeah, no, I think we're fortunate to work with, with good coopers, and as we all know, um, it plays a, a large ro role in supporting your wine. And um, yes, I think we, we're really finding our feet very well with, with the oaking, um, which I think also brings another uh, layer to the, the wine, an interesting part of the wine. It, I don't know if it's worth the stress of fermenting spontaneously, but uh, it's there. <laughs> So um, tonight we're actually tasting um, something different from Postman. Um, usually with the Pinot Noir celebration we have our Magnum Opus, which is a single um, vineyard expression. But um, the grey label is our Upper Yemen Arda Valley Pinot Noir, um, obviously 2019 vintage. But again, it's, um, it's actually a four parcel, um, four vineyard parcel of wine. And this is a... Um, uh, a range that the Bosman started in um, 2015. So they acquired the farm in um, here in Emanis in, uh, in the year 2000, and they basically converted an apple farm and started planting vineyards. So the oldest vineyard, um, Pinot Noir vineyard, was planted in 2006. So the age range from 2006 or plantings from 2006 to 2014, and um, yeah, I think. Um, what stood out in 2019 for me is the fact that um, we had a bit of a, a drier winter and um, also with the heat waves that we saw in the end of January and the beginning of Feb, um, actually it has quite hard with this Pinot Noir and to a certain extent kind of caught me off guard. Um, I did pick it a bit riper than what we would usually do so you'll actually find that the, um, the wine for Upper Yom and Arda Valley it shows a bit more of a savory, earthy notes uh, compared to perfume, um, red fruit notes that we would usually see. But I think um, overall I'm very happy with the quality of the wine. Um, we had good temperatures in the, in the summer and, and the ripening season. So in terms of quality and the crop size that we've got, we're quite pleased with the 2019 vintage. Um, yeah, and I think stylistically, 
what I try to do with this one is because we've taken four different parcels is looking at the, the vineyard blocks and, and what it brings mostly um, dry land farm so again the fact that we had less water in the winter and warmer season showed that we actually picked a bit one week to two weeks earlier um, but s still shows good concentration in the wine soft tannins because I like to keep it on the lease so I would leave it on the lease for um, over winter and um, depending on the ripeness of the blocks I would do a whole bunch again to try and promote that um, fruit and I think it, it turned out um, quite balanced and um, these wines always love to stay in the bottle so it's been in the bottle for a year um, but yeah overall we very happy with the 2019 vintage. Well, you get a lovely feel of, of, of ripeness and sweetness mm. but also there's lovely top notes of of flowers as well mm -hmm. with it, so. Yeah, a bit layered as well, especially with the oak use. So we sticked um, with that 20% U oak, still 12 months. So I think how it integrated with the wine and how the wine has um, the layers shown, even with the, the components. So I keep everything separately up, up, until, um, up until like 10 months or eight months before we bottle. So then I would put everything together. So it's actually nice to see how the vineyards yes. and the plots develop mm -hmm. over time okay. as well. Mm -hmm. and, and that single vineyard, is that also included, the one that you bottled no. before, that's not included? No, so in that 2019 is a separate, separate bottling, yes. Was yeah. there any particular reason that you decided to go with the upper and not the, the magnum? The um, magnum? Because the magnum opus is not yet released, oh. so we're a bit behind on that one. So, But I think that's, that's what I love about the valley, the fact that we have, even this one, it, the acid is quite low, but you have that um, vibrant acidity or freshness mm -hmm. in the wines. Yes. And, um, so I'm not scared to age the wines. I know yeah. in um, the magnum opus will show well in a year or two as well. Mm -hmm. so. Our 2019 family vineyards. Um, for me, 2019, I find this, uh, it's for me it's a start of a trend of later ripening uh, vintages. I find quite a similarity between 1920 and 21, and that break away from the drought years, the kind of 2015 to 2017, and then 2018 kind of being that bit of transition period. You know, it was a bit of a weird year, 2018. Um, but 2019, there were some pros and cons. I mean, I think the cons for us is that our volumes are on, on some of our older vineyards, like Wind and Sea and Sea Dragon were quite low, um, just low fertility and I'm starting to become concerned. Also looked quite a bit at the winters um, that we've had over the last couple of years and definitely our cold units are shifting later. And I'm, I'm starting to become concerned, concerned if that's kind of just put the, the vine out of routine and if it's had an a, a effect on, on fertility. Um, but nevertheless, you know, we, we had some crops two to three tons uh, a hectare, where we would normally get four or five, you know, and when you hit two, it starts to, it starts to hurt. Um, but very happy with the wine. I mean, it's after a few years of, um, of drought and really having these, these quite robust wines and, and robust tannin structures, it's good to, to see a lot of, especially in the upper Yamalan Arda, where we've got, you know, a bit more of that free draining topsoil this, this bit of uh, red fruit and perfume coming uh, coming off the noses. Also saw quite a bit of that in Wind and Sea. Um, and um, yeah, from the long ripening, just quite supple structure, supple supple tannins. I think, um, well, our 2019, I don't think is open quite now, but it's it's going to take a while to open up, and I think these wines will will age uh, extremely well. Yeah. Definitely for me, one of your more sort of tighter mm. closed, you know, it's not, not in, a, in a reductive sense, but it's definitely tacky wine. Uh, we were quite generous with, um, with whole bunch. Yeah. Um, you know, Wind and Sea usually gets, you know, in a bad year for it, we take it down to about 20%. In a good year, well, in a normal year, about 30 and we push it up to, to 40%. Um, so yeah, you get a bit of that spiciness and you know a, a couple of those austere characters hanging around. But it's okay. it's one of the things I like kind of from these years is that your your fruit is never too sweet, yeah. and it just allows these other earthy uh, flavors to come in. 
and uh, and play a part. Um, I mean, looking forward to 2020 and 2021 as well. I mean, it's 2020 for us was the first vintage over 100 days from flowering to harvest. That's that's kind of the normal standard for Burgundy, and that's something I haven't seen in the Himalayan order for for 20 years. And kind of, well, it'll be interesting to see where. Uh, the trend of our, our seasons is, is going and you know whether we're having this up and down and weather events because of climate change I don't know um, but yeah it's interesting I mean on the other hand you know as uh, JC said you know you, there's kind of never a bad vintage in the Himalayanada just a different representation a different expression and yeah definitely I think over all the wines, I just see a lot more kind of red fruits, a bit of energy, you know, that to me is a, is a very good indicator for 2019. <laughs> so what we're tasting tonight is our 2019 vintage of Le Luc. Le Luc is a single vineyard, Pinot Noir. It's a relatively small vineyard, 1.3 hectares. Um, and it was planted out in 2013 so this is the third bottling of of that vintage and uh, really happy with 2019 I thought that I was really worried because there was um, that the rain that we had in mid uh, January um, but it never really materialized as heavily as we thought it was going to um, and we ended up with um, slightly later picking than I would have than I had done in the previous years um, but I think that what it did was um, just gave that wine a little bit more fruit than I in the previous two vintages have have picked at um, and you know this vineyard is on really interesting soils it's um, it's a very heavy coffee clip and sandy topsoil um, and below that, about 500 um, millimeters, half a meter below, is this really, really heavy decomposed granite clay. Um, and at this age now, those roots are just starting to tap into those clay layers. Um, and I think that the vineyard's just starting now to come of age and it's reflecting itself in the wine. And what I'm finding here is that pretty sort of um, expected upper Himalayan Arda lift to the wine. You know, it's got this vibrant acidity uh, so it's fresh um, there's lovely sort of few fruit purity in the wine um, but behind it all is uh, structure um, the tannins I think are still quite young in the sense that uh, I, I make the wines to age the wine is very young still I think that another four or five years in bottle this the tannins will already start to come into their own um, but the structure is there um, the fruit side of it um, is quite typical of restless fruit where um, we steer quite clear of any sweetness. So the wine is, our, our pinots are relatively dry, much like our other wines as well. So um, we have very, very little residual sugar left in these wines. Um, they are dry, they've got good fresh acidity, not too much fruit because of the time that we're picking. Um, and they are very much table wines. So wines to eat with um, the higher fruits uh, sorry the higher acidity um, really uh, cuts through the food that you're eating keeps the palate fresh um, and the lack of sweetness also keeps the um, the the food more the hero than the wine on the table um, and in some respects it's more of a European style um, of Pinot that I'm aiming for. I don't always achieve it, but um, I'm relatively new to it. Um, but it's, I'm, I'm not too concerned about having a fruit-driven wine. Um, so these are dry, savory, um, more acid-driven, structured wines that need time. Um, 2019, like it's been discussed already, um, we're sort of coming out of the drought years. Um, it was, a, I think, quite a special vintage. Um, I got a little bit more than I expected. That why, to me, it is uh, special. Um, but overall, 
I think for the third vintage on, on Restless, it's a, it's a wine that I'm pretty happy with. Um, and I think that it's a wine that people need to just give a little bit more time um, and enjoy in three or four years time um, with a good meal. Thank you. There's nothing wrong with that, huh? mm. Now we're just waiting for the meal. <laughs> <laughs> Three, four years. This meal you promised. <laughs> Craig, do you, do you think it's, I mean, how does, how does 20 and 21 compare? Because I think that 19 was a huge step up in, in quality. Um, I didn't do anything different. It was identical vinification. The only thing was, you know, the vintage, the, the vines were, um, 10% older, which is quite significant, maybe even higher, 15% older. Mm. Um, and I picked it slightly later, so there um, was a little bit more fruit in the wine than the previous wines. Now, so understand the previous wines, I was very focused on trying to figure out what these vineyards are and what the fruit is. And if you are really genuinely trying to find out what you've got, what your building blocks are, it's it's really important to pick relatively early so that your fruit isn't masking everything and your alcohol as a result of your high sugar isn't masking anything and also to be very restrained on your oaking um, uh, but from a vinification point of view nothing's really different in terms of oaking regimes um, uh, punch dance fermentation you know, that's all standard it's all uh, natural ferments um, very little um, actual uh, punch down to, and no pump overs um, mostly work just keeping the cap wet and and more of it uh, infusion um, so I think it's uh, it's also a great journey of the vineyard where we're seeing the vineyard aging and the roots like I mentioned earlier starting to tap into the clay layer getting through that first 500 meters of sand and uh, coffee clip and um, it makes sense to me that the wine will start to um, evolve as that as the vineyard ages. Do you do uh, post ferment maceration much? Not really. I okay. do it a lot on cabernet, but not yeah, on the yeah, pinot. Yeah. Okay. No. I do work with uh, with some whole bunch though. Yeah. Um, this year I um, I layered quite a bit, so that yeah. sort of lasagna thing where I layered whole berry, whole bunch, and crushed, destemmed, and just built up these layers inside the ferment inside the fermentation tanks. Mm. All right, so uh, where's your label? Yeah, I'm still looking for it. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, so, <laughs> so tonight uh, we, we're showing our 2019 Noir. Um, label's still coming. But reason for that is mostly because we're not on 19 vintage yet. So um, we just thought, well, everyone else is showing a 19, so we'll also show a 19, um, which is cool for me because it's something I made as well. So. Um, <laughs> so 19 was my second year at Love Years. Um, uh, it's the Noir, uh, you know, the way I saw it, it's, um, it's our flagship uh, Pinot. It was also one of our first uh, labels that we made. And um, it's something, well, it's always been one of our main, you know, focuses on so showing something what we deem as slightly, um, you know, some of our beta blocks. Um, so it's a blend of two blocks which are pretty much adjacent to each other, um, roughly about the same age, um, planted in 2008 as well, um, and nine. But um, and mostly, actually, in this blend, mostly triple seven clone. Um, so there's a little bit of one one five um, from the one, but mostly on the other side of the block or the other block next to it is triple seven. Um, so it's roughly about it would take just under 50 percent 50 percent if we had to call it i'm not going to get too specific but about 50 percent of the two blocks um and um yeah i think it's quite for me quite lovely is in a sense um on our vineyards babylon i think um, one thing i do find from those vineyards um so for my time there it's been you do find that there's always quite a prominent fruit um powerful almost like a quite a big larger expression of fruit i, I do feel that, that you get up there um, also kind of shows that in some ways and slightly in a tannin structure as well, um, especially with the triple seven components, um, do show a, a slightly larger and broodier type of characteristics on the line. 
Um, so, but I don't think it's you know it's, it's for me it's quite I, I do see that annual or yearly. So it's like it almost seems like that spot kind of shows me that you know um, where I, I do like that it's slightly more darker in a sense than some of my other blocks that I do have. Um, so it is um, yeah it's quite quite nice for it to work with. Um, it's you know in terms of vinification very not really too much anything special. This, this is the first day I played a little bit with a whole bunch of components, um, just starting to see what it actually does, just trying to teach myself something. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a, a trial, I think, you know, I, I also think that I'm starting to sort of also find a slightly bit more standard style on, on this label itself, because I do think that also takes a bit of time just to figure that out. Um, and some years I think, you know, you do learn a lot from, you know, Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and I think you know at least you're going forward with that. So I think, in terms of the typicity, I would say like it's it's very Babylon, you know, site specific. So I, I do like that, and at least it shows that we're not over playing our hands in the cellar and trying to take that away from you know what it actually shows. So um, so yeah, I mean it's also been in bottle for a year. Um, I think you know release will probably be you know, maybe. A, Two years or something from now, so it's still be in the bottle for a while. Um, it's yeah, it's it's a style also that's made to be slightly older. Uh, uh, that's why we do keep it back a little bit. Um, also, interesting enough, uh, we also full dry land, so I do think that has an effect on every vintage we're going to do. So, um, which is quite cool to see that you know how that plays out and how that also you know develops. Um, but yeah, I mean, otherwise, I mean, I'm fairly happy where it's sitting now. Um, I don't think there's anything that bothers me too much. I think it's, you know, it's, it's uh, I quite like that it's, for me, quite typical of our side. And, yeah. It's, it's for me the first, in Oregon, they always say 777's got a cola, cola character, or I, I call it cola tonic, that sort of cordial stuff you get. It's the first time that I've, that I've tasted that on a, on a, on triple seven from South, from South Africa, it's, it's a very nice expression of it. It's not yeah. as sweet as you get in Oregon, so it's a very nice, almost tart. Um, the, the sugar acid balance is very good on the, on the palate. Okay. Is it all Babylon fruit? Yeah. So everything. It's um, yeah. Uh, all, all our all our fruit goes into uh, and stuff. It's only from. Do you only have vineyards on Babylon? Yeah. Well, we have those um, Sauvignons next to the cellar as well, but uh, those are... Those are qualified vineyards. Yeah, is that a vineyard? It's, it's coming. coming. This is your, that, is your, that is your contribution to the Herman Arthur Valley. <laughs> <laughs> <also. laughs> uh, I just want to say, it's, it's, it's coming. Uh, <laughs> are we waiting? Uh, are we I waiting? mean, like, some things take a bit longer, so yeah, we'll yeah. get there. Like, um, yeah, it's... Uh, no, we've been told your viticultural schools are, are impressive, so we, we're watching. Yeah, I don't know if you think this season. Yeah, look, it's good. It's not. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, you got <laughs> There's a, only so much someone can do. When you got a lot on your plate, I think. You <laughs> <laughs> also, 19, huh, obviously. Uh, reserve <laughs> 19. <laughs> just check if they get the right uh, the right bottle. Um, yeah, I think I think 19 was a, was a very good year um, overall. But that said, um, I. Oh, that is how I experienced the rich. 19 was still for us a, a touch warm year. We we normally not really that geared up that we already go sugar reading in January and we was already suddenly out in the field looking for, for, for what's going on in, in, in sugar terms. Um, so it was it was an early start in the spring and when that in spring starts early, obviously you will ending up to have a relative early harvest. And um, just finishing now 21 harvest, I most probably six months ago would be super happy about 19 to showcase but when I see 21 who was again for me much more vintage who I feel comfortable with to have this long hanging time mm. and much more relaxed approach in harvest that there was no rush we really got nearly more worried how the sugar level comes up but the acid was there so for me for me um, it's a great vintage I think it's a very it's a, it, it is quite a, a showy vintage in a way. It is it is just good. It is it, it has the flavor profile you would expect. It has a, a smooth elegance. The mouthfeel is there. I also believe it has the aging potential. But I think 21, for example, we go again to more slightly touch more edgy wines. Who in a way I think older you get, you're looking more for edgy wines. 
because maybe you give me the HOA at certain stages. Um, but I, 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 um, I'm very happy to showcase from Evan Art in the 19 vintage. I think it's a, it goes like a kind of a line to the whole different wards. It, they all have their merits, um, each individual wine. In our uh, specific case, how we, we are approaching Pinot at that stage, and I think we also had a slightly uh, evolution and journey on our wine estate was, uh, I still believe that young vineyards, it's great to make wine, but it's not the same satisfactory uh, profile to make wine when you have all the wines, all the vineyards. And um, uh, reaching now close uh, 20 years, we can see the evolution where we, in which direction we go. And I still believe 20 years is still young for, 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 for plants. But we took the call after 10 years plus to go much more into single vineyards. So the reserve is a single vineyard, but we have um, MRs also single vineyards, the art gets a single vineyard, the marketing team goes up and down because they don't know what's happening downstairs with how many single vineyards we want to showcase. But I think when it comes to Pinot Noir, you want to reflect a certain site. And, and that's, that's all about when you have the expression of maybe all the plants to really showcase at its best. And we, um, I think we are very blessed that, that the, the terroir, even when you would overall look a map, it looks pretty similar uh, soil-wise on our farm. But when you look into the kind of uh, vinification parcel by parcel, it has completely different approaches in stylistic. Who, who makes it maybe also more complicated? Because end of the days, uh, I mean, there's not such things as what is the best. You you have maybe somewhere a little bit more perfume. The other one is the darker berry. The one has more structure. So it is like a whole, a whole selection you can choose from, and you can express yourself on, on different on different slopes, aspects, clones. Um, when it comes to vintage, I think it's also for me quite critical to talk the way through. Yes, you have the climatic circumstances, but I think in vintage, it's always also important how performed your vineyards as such. And you know, sometimes we have an exceptional good block who just comes together in a year, even maybe the weather was tricky, but somehow we are avoiding shriveling, sunburn, of whatever we manipulating the whole growing season. And uh, some other years, we do wrong, you know, we maybe take the leaves away too much on the wrong time, on the wrong side. And all what drives us is basically to improve. And each time we spot the mistake, we want to try next year to not make the same mistake. And, and uh, nature will keep you humble enough because you think this year you did everything right. And then end of the year you figure out it was again another maybe little mistake you, 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 uh, you, you did. From our perspective, um, what I really become quite comfortable in my own skin, how I make wine, is, is, is that we, uh, on the red wine, we took the call now for 2017 onwards, is we, we took a complete backseat in a way that we don't use any products beside of sulfur. So we don't use any enzymes, tannins, finings, or whatever yeasts. And in the beginning, I was a little bit worried about that, that, that uh, decision. But I think more you start to work in this direction, more you come comfortable to really work with the grapes. And I think the, the true reflection end of the days of your estate, it is most probably with little intervention reflecting. And you know, most probably another 10 or 20 winemakers will tell you the same story. It becomes very repetitive, but you just have to go back maybe to the drawing board and, and say, how do you want to approach the thing? It's, it's, there's plenty of good wines out there. You want to be truthful against the specific terroir of what you produce, mm -hmm. and that is most probably the most satisfaction you get back when you have something reflecting your place. And you will not winning over, and you don't have to win over everybody. But I think you can be yourself and say, "Look, this is what that little mm -hmm. corner of my piece of land produces on a yearly basis, and it's a reflection about." Uh, how do you farm? It's a reflection about how the vintage brings along different weather patterns. And it's, it's overall, it should be slightly different every year, otherwise it is like a cool drink. And we're not making cool drinks, we're making terroir driven wines. And, and I think that is, that is end of the day, so I, I really getting less and less excited about these big blind tastings and to drawing score at each other because it is what Craig said before, some wines that maybe perform very well with food, some other wines are showing off in the flight and say, wow, that's the most attractive right now. But when you eat, suddenly you say, oh, that one who was maybe the, 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 the dark sheep in the, in the lineup suddenly shines. Yeah. And I think that is where, where wine becomes such a, 
it's actually irrelevant to measure because you can't measure. And, and, and uh, the human being want to measure, they want to really tell you what is the best. And even myself, because I think most of persons sitting around the table like this, you want to be good in what you do. Um, but when it comes to wine, it becomes, in a way, I think you have to be able to take a step back and just really be chill and just reflect yourself and say, look, this is maybe my preference, this is my preference, but it doesn't necessarily mean that everybody has to cover you yourself. And I think when you, when you come in that kind of mindset in this industry, I think you, you, you're much better off. And it's also an age thing. When I was very young, I felt, thought to myself, shit, my wine has to be the best. <laughs> and older you get, you start to realize, shit, there's a lot of good wines around, you know, and you suddenly sure start enough. to say, um, hmm. <laughs> it's maybe not just the world just waiting for you yourself. And, um, but it, 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 it's, and I, I, I don't say that just on the Helen Art and gatherings. It is for me that the most relevant point when it comes to wine is, is, is when you see your neighbors performing well in wine, suddenly you start to realize the culture is suitable to that place. Because I think most of the persons in this industry are dedicated to making good wine. But when you, when, you are, when you have the nature generous on your side, I would expect that you come up with a good wine because you're not, you shouldn't stuff up a good quality grape, you should make a good wine. And, and I think the Helmut Arten, the, the success story for me to reflect in Pinot Noir from the Helmut Arten is, is, is that I can send my customers and say, go and up and down, taste the valley, and they will all come back and say, hey, there's good Pinot Noirs in this valley. Mm -hmm. And I think that is something that's something to reflect at that, that um, when it comes to South Africa and I, I never would down talk another region, but when in South Africa we're talking about Pinot Noir, I, I really be, be very comfortable in my statement to say you have to go to the Helen Arten to be really credible to talk about Pinot Noir in quality. There will be some other regions also popping up to make good quality, mm -hmm. but overall as a wine region, I mean, we in the Helen Arten, we have mm -hmm. just a very strong hold on this cultivar and um, it's good for us. <laughs> And I think that we, we proved ourselves for 10, 15 years in this category of Pinot Noir, I think. Each wine list, when you see Pinot Noir, it's Helmut Norton. Yeah, and I would hate for any of us to taste the same, because we don't. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, just kind of what you're, you're saying that, you know, throwing off the shackles of adding stuff, it's, it, you know, you're, you're basically making yourself naked. You know, you're going onto the beach and you're going to throw everything off and say, this is me. Mm. And, um, but... Sure. Mark, I'll, I'll get locked up. <laughs> 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 I'll get I'll get locked up. Warm, <laughs> you're worn up front. I mean, that's, that's exactly it. Right. It's okay. That's exactly it. Some of it is and, and we get older, we don't care. So that's what you said. <laughs> exactly. I'm not, I mean, you say that. You're older than me. You just help me in a heartbreak. <laughs> uh, it's I've, worse I've, at all. I, I think but it's, at least it's the truth. It's and, and, and it's, and it's yeah. Yeah. We're very lucky here. We've got, um, you know, every terroir in the world is manipula manipulated by man to a degree, but we've got a very high mm -hmm. level to start from in the Evelyn Art. I think it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, when a lot of people say, ah, oh, we've got this bit of an old world thing or a bit of a Baganian. It's not Baganian. I think the thing we've probably learned from the Baganians is just observing. Yeah. Observe yeah. and so learn. Easy to learn. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, I think people say that because it's not South Africa. You know, it doesn't feel to them like every other region that's oh. able to produce Pinot Noir. So they have, feel this need to almost say it must be like something that already yeah. existed. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a every. Yeah. 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 It's an easy yeah. reference to to yeah. s something that everyone knows. It's yeah. Can you just put, um, cut it so that I go before JC? I'd like to end on that, please. I don't want to follow that in the. No, so this is about 70% 115 and 30% 777. Um, so strong predominantly, beats. sorry, strong, strong 30%. 30%. So it was interesting because um, anyone who knows our, um, our sort of brand is that our uniqueness, I think, is in that we bottle age significantly before release. So like uh, 2019, every year when we have to put our wines into comparative vintages, I always am like, because our current vintage we've just moved into is 2015. So for me to pour a 19 when I know it is not nearly at a point where I would like to be releasing it, it it's still for me um, has got um, quite a lot of tannin structure, which I think that needs to matter. The acid's still quite high for me. Um, but what was interesting is as we've been going through the wines, and that's why I'm quite thankful we were the last wine, it has started to open up a little bit, which I think is indicative of what may happen uh, with a little bit more bottle aging. 
So um, if you've bought the Pinot Noir Celebration case, drink all the other wines and stick the other one in the <laughs> cupboard, um, <laughs> open it in six years time. But um, no, it's, it's interesting because um, 2019 for us, I think the same as, as a lot of what everyone else said, um, it was our yo lowest yield in five years. So it was really at a turning point for us where we realized there's a lot we need to do to give back into the soil. And that's really where Shane's taken over and spent the last, you know, three, four years um, really trying to do sustainable farming and doing as much as possible as putting back into the land. And, I, and I've and i seen, um, there was a lot of comments on how beautiful 2021 was as a vintage. I know we're talking about 19, but I've seen that growth in the vineyards from 18 to 19, 20 to 21. We, I can honestly say, I think we pulled the best crop we ever have of our farm in 2021. Um, and that's why, you know, every vintage is, is slightly different. Some years, as you say, are learning ones where, um, the style of wine you get shows you that there is something that needs to change or, or be done. So um, I love the wine for what it is. Um, but yeah, something I think that's stylistically different to what we normally produce as a Pinot Noir. We had about 20% um, whole bunch in here. We don't always do whole bunch. And I think it shows um, quite a bit in the wine. Um, yeah, but other than that, um, quite a high natural acidity in our, our Pinot Noirs. And because of that exact reason, definitely needs a lot of bottle aging before release. Um, same thing next year, we'll be we celebrating our 20 year anniversary of buying the farm, which is always very exciting. And I've seen over the last five years, like you were talking about Craig, that, that mm. vineyard development in the wine um, and the huge significance it makes um, from that 10 to 15 um, to 20 year mark. Um, and I think really very minimal um, intervention wine making here. And it's, I love tasting from our very first vintage up till now because it, it shows you the whole journey of the vineyard age more than anything else. Because obviously in the beginning when you got more fruit driven Pinot Noirs, you adjust your winemaking style slightly, but it gets to a point where, you know, that is, that is your house style. That is the way you're going to make Pinot Noir. And then it's really just an expression of, of each vintage and each additional year of growth on the vineyards and tasting that through the wine. So yeah, I like that it's a stylistically different in 2019. I think, as everyone said, a very memorable year for the whole region. So, yeah, I don't know if there's any I, questions. I love, the, I love the energy that we've got through all. I mean, we usually get pretty good acidity and liveliness in the wine, but this is for me, as a flight, if you consider it's a snapshot of the whole area, it's, it's, um, it's we've good done well. I, like, I love how you see how the structure of the wine kind of changes as you go up in the in the appellation, and how we if ended up with the region. It's there's more structure, there's more tannins, and I think, um, especially you putting emphasis on bottle aging. I think the fact that you made use of the whole bunch of the tannin structure you had in the wine, and obviously the right acidity is going to help with that with that aging. But um, I think all in all, like 2019 showed very well throughout the three wards. It's, it's a very good vintage. A great one. We can be proud to hang our hats yeah. on. Yeah. <coughs> I, I still, I still, I'm still not 100% buying in the kind of thing about the, the free wards be significant different. I, I still think it's pretty much driven by the individuals of farming, winemaking, philosophy, putting into the whole context, and and I also not would like to be myself in the position to say defending now this is a specific word that's the reason why it's this direction of stylistic of wine or this is the word because of this I think and this this wine shows for me again I, I wouldn't be able to say pinpoint easily out okay that's because it's a rich or because it's a rally or upper exactly I think there's a lot there's so much going on, the farms are relative young and, and, and even on our farm, I mean, we have different styles and you have different styles, you will experience when you see now more plantings coming along, you will have different mm -hmm. expression of Pinot Noir on your kind of 500 meters next to each other. Mm -hmm. And that's therefore, I mean, obviously we can't take the stand and say we want to be specific to say this is not the upper, this is the valley, this is the rich, but I, I I still think there's so much going on between, you know, the wood regime, the whole bunch, the interaction, how much you punch down or you don't punch down. There's so much thing going on and and Burgundy took a long time, you know, to get and even in Burgundy, I mean, when you drink Richbourg, it doesn't mean it tastes Richbourg. There is like five, six producers and each wine 
has a little bit of a different expression. Huh? Yeah. So, so uh, it, it is. It is. It would be nice in a way to say, okay, it is a, it is a rich or it is a value or it is open, but I, I don't think we, we desperately have to do that. You know, I, I think I think be proud of the quality overall, and, and and be proud of everybody who brings new products in this kind of region and is good and is yeah. a proud producer of Pinot Noir. But um, I find it, I I sort of agree and disagree. I think in the in the Yemelin Arda Valley, uh, as in Hamilton Russell Bushart, we've got very, very similar soil. I think pretty much the same way our Pinot grows. And I think that sort of shows for me in the wines generally, not every vintage. I think 19 is a vintage that was quite easy across the, across the whole area. No, but well, I, maybe I do. No, I do, because maybe I worked with everything. But, but, um, from 19, I mean. I, I, but, but I think 19, if you looked at, at wine quality and, and, and everything, it was, it was maybe a quite easy all over but I can I can speak from from experience is you know we can have we can have no rain or 30 millimeters and if you drive past La Vierge's cell it's dry on the road all the way up to the ridge or and I, I think in the I think in the upper Yemelin Arda as well there's um, you know it's it's geographically the biggest region and or the biggest um, appellation and it's um, there's a bit more soil variance there, I think, and, and the, the pinots are planted on quite a, quite a variety of different soils. Um, and then the ridge, you've got all those different aspects. So I think it's, you know, where Burgundy's, they, they've had hundreds of years to pinpoint little slopes, rows. I mean, uh, you've got Latash and, and a pitching wedge further, you've got a vineyard that, that's almost insignificant in the, in the bigger scheme. So I think we'll get there. I think it's a great process to to participate, to yeah, to participate in and to to really f it forces us to to fine tune what we're doing, instead of of making um, generic Pinot Noirs. So I think I I like the idea of it. You can buy into it or not, um, but it's it's I think it's better to be focused on the detail instead of of um, just taking a broad brushstroke on everything. was your rainfall and it's like two three times what we've got I mean, you to, and then you just that cloud blanket you're driving and you're just like you driving to white yeah, yeah. and it's yeah. boiling yeah. further yeah. down yeah. the region it's, it's yeah. 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 less than a kilometer yeah. from yeah. Sumerich which is our neighbors yeah. but sometimes but people like to have to rain in the northern region so not just in good it also it's a problem all the way around but I always find Sumerich is also where there's a line normally but then but then this year Craig now it becomes interesting now we've got four conversations East yeah, there's too many conversations at <laughs> But it's true, we, had, we in fact had 63, uh, you had about 80, and then you had 20. So uh, and, and then later, uh, we were luckily done with harvest, but that rain that came in sort of mid-March, mid I think. I remember looking up and we had a drizzle and above like sort of a, along the mountain range. Yeah, we had some camp irrigation. <laughs> it, was, it, was like, it was like this <laughs> cloud break. I thought, what did Craig do wrong? <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? It's like, what? Like, oh, like, right. Just in times of picking, like the, the, the differential in times of picking, like, you'll say, okay, I've got all, all my sun in plant. The Hermanarden Valley starts in spring, normally two weeks earlier than we on yeah. the ridge. Mm -hmm. And these two weeks, you never catch up because the plant starts to grow. That means it flowers two weeks earlier and you yeah. pick two weeks earlier. So when there's not any unexpected thing, is you will pick earlier than we up the there because the our winter yeah. is cold yeah. and we have frost up there, we have minus mm. temperatures. That means in the spring times... Discern the granite. I, I can get stuck sometimes between ridge and um, the lower part, but there's there... There's a strange back of the palate as you swallow sensation to the granite soil. And I, your wine and my wine are relatively different, but I can pick up the same. There's like a 5% something, and I could never put my finger on it, in those wines where you, 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 I can only uh, 
to deduce from it that it's a soil derived thing because it's there in, in our two different styles of wines, the same thing I get in, in, in both of them. All you and Cordy are brying together too much and just think, rubbing I off think, on each no, other. I, I think no, 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 it's just a bit of swamp. No, but this clonal, this clonal um, experiment you're going to do first, Craig, is going to show us all of that. Yeah. We'll have the same clonal. The no, same winemaker I'm, I'm, making... I'm so it. glad you volunteered me because um, it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be revolutionary. <laughs> for your wine. <laughs> and, and, and I had nothing better to do. Either. For your recoveries. For your yeah, recoveries. Yeah, yeah, Some yeah, yeah. is going to see what? <laughs> 780, <laughs> 780 <laughs> liters recovery on Pinot Noir. How is that possible? It's vintage, my friend. But I think that I think <laughs> there's a good opportunity the for I think there's a good opportunity for everyone to work with the same barrel and make as a tester vinify the wine identically mm. put it into the same wood we've, we've but then you need a, the same a different, hand a different doing cellar it. makes a big difference mm. yeah, yeah sure, sure, one sure. cellar and, and one wine maker because yours is full of saccharomyces yeah. and mine's full of uh <laughs> 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 i mean i mean i mean to, to get to get the cellar the cellar signature i mean i mean your wine is a hamlet russell wine for me stylistically because of the oak probably I don't know, but I just say and, stylistically, and, and, and stylistically. But that's what I'm saying, cellar flora. And there was, there's not a lot of grapes from your farm, as you said, uh, uh, to the circumstances. So uh, yeah, it's so definitely it has a huge uh, effect. It has a huge effect. Yeah, of course. Obviously, probably I mean, the most I mean, you, significant effect. I, I think so because yeah. because you 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 have a lot of interaction and everybody says yes, as I do. We take a back seat, We don't do a lot, but mm -hmm. still you 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 do a lot. What of you things. Are doing yeah, everyone's at minimum today. No, but, yeah, but then you decide. You, you there's do there's a lot. Temperatures, absolutely. All sorts of. Craig vessels, meal vessels. A one, a one spot. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. If you use a, a little bit of bread from every single farm and one person made it and did the same wine as himself to then taste actually a farm by farm, appellation by appellation. Are we selling next year's uh, wine Here's journey? Yeah, sounds very cool. <laughs> Can you imagine that? If it was just for... Anyway, to what? <laughs> <laughs> and cut! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys.